bits are cutting tools used in a drill to remove material to create holes, almost always of circular cross section. Drill bits come in many sizes and shapes and can create different kinds of holes in many different materials. In order to create holes drill bits are usually attached to a drill, which powers them to cut through the workpiece, typically by rotation. The drill will grasp the upper end of a bit called the shank in the chuck. Drills come in standardized drill bit sizes. A comprehensive drill bit and tab size chart lists metric and imperial size drills alongside the required screw tab sizes. There are also certain specialized drill bits that can create holes with a non-circular cross-section. Twist drill bit. The twist drill bit is the type produced in largest quantity today. It comprises a cutting point at the tip of a cylindrical shaft with helical flutes. The flutes act as an Archimedean screw and lift swarf out of the hole. The modern style twist drill bit was invented by Sir Joseph Whitworth in 1860. They were later improved by Stephen A. Morse of East Bridgewater, Massachusetts, who experimented with the pitch of the twist. The original method of manufacture was to cut two grooves in opposite sides of a round bar then to twist the bar giving the tulips name to produce the helical flutes. Nowadays, the drill bit is usually made by rotating the bar while moving it past a grinding wheel to cut the flutes in the same manner as cutting helical gears. Twist drill bits range in diameter from 0.002 to 3.5 and in can be as long as 25.5 inches. The geometry and sharpening of the cutting edges is crucial to the performance of the bit. Small bits that become blunt are often discarded because sharpening them correctly is difficult and they are cheap to replace. For larger bits, special grinding jigs are available. A special tool grinder is available for sharpening or reshaping cutting surfaces on twist drill bits in order to optimize the bit for a particular material. Manufacturers can produce special versions of the twist drill bit, varying the geometry and the materials used to suit particular machinery and particular materials to be cut. Twist drill bits are available in the widest choice of tooling materials. However, even for industrial users, most holes are drilled with standard high-speed steel bits. The most common twist drill bit sold in general hardware stores has a point angle of 118 degrees, acceptable for use in wood, metal, plastic, and most other materials although it does not perform as well as using the optimum angle for each material. In most materials it does not tend to wander or dig in. A more aggressive angle, such as 90 degrees, is suited for very soft plastics and other materials it would wear rapidly in hard materials. Such a bit is generally self-starting and can cut very quickly. A shallower angle, such as 150 degrees, is suited for drilling steels and other tougher materials. This style of bit requires a starter hole, but does not bind or suffer premature wear so long as a suitable feed rate is used. Drill bits with no point angle are used in situations where a blind, flat-bottomed hole is required. These bits are very sensitive to changes in lip angle, and even a slight change can result in an inappropriately fast-cutting drill bit that will suffer premature wear. Long series drill bits are unusually long twist drill bits. However, they are not the best tool for routinely drilling deep holes, as they require frequent withdrawal to clear the flutes of swarf and to prevent breakage of the bit. Instead, gun drill bits are preferred for deep hole drilling. Step drill bit. A step drill bit is a drill bit that has the tip ground down to a different diameter. The transition between this ground diameter and the original diameter is either straight, to form a counterbore, or angled, to form a countersink. The advantage to this style is that both diameters have the same flute characteristics, which keeps the bit from clogging when drilling in softer materials, such as aluminum in contrast, a drill bit with a slip-on collar does not have the same benefit. Most of these bits are custom made for each application, which makes them more expensive. Hole saw. Hole saws take the form of a short open cylinder with saw teeth on the open edge, used for making relatively large holes in thin material. They remove material only from the edge of the hole, cutting out an intact disc of material, unlike many drills which remove all material in the interior of the hole. They can be used to make large holes in wood, sheet metal and other materials. Core drill bit A bit used to enlarge an existing hole is called a core drill bit. The existing hole may be the result of a core from a casting or a stamped punched hole. 
The name comes from its first use, for drilling out the hole left by a foundry core, a cylinder placed in a mold for a casting that leaves an irregular hole in the product. This core drill bit is solid. These core drill bits are similar in appearance to reamers as they have no cutting point or means of starting a hole. They have three or four flutes which enhances the finish of the hole and ensures the bit cuts evenly. Core drill bits differ from reamers in the amount of material they are intended to remove. A reamer is only intended to enlarge a hole a slight amount which, depending on the reamer's size, may be anything from 0.1 mm to perhaps a millimeter. A core drill bit may be used to double the size of a hole. Using an ordinary two-flute twist drill bit to enlarge the hole resulting from a casting core will not produce a clean result, the result will possibly be out of round, off-center and generally of poor finish. The two-fluted drill bit also has a tendency to grab on any protuberance such as flash which may occur in the product. Countersink bit a countersink is a conical hole cut into a manufactured object. A countersink bit, sometimes called simply countersink, is the cutter used to cut such a hole. A common use is to allow the head of a bolt or screw, with a shape exactly matching the countersunk hole, to sit flush with or below the surface of the surrounding material. By comparison, a counterbore makes a flat bottomed hole that might be used with a hex headed cap screw. A countersink may also be used to remove the burr left from a drilling or tapping operation. Indexable drill bit. Indexable drill bits are primarily used in CNC and other high precision or production equipment, and are the most expensive type of drill bit, costing the most per diameter and length. Like indexable lathe tools and milling cutters, they use replaceable carbide or ceramic inserts as a cutting face to alleviate the need for a tool grinder. One insert is responsible for the outer radius of the cut, and another insert is responsible for the inner radius. The tool itself handles the point deformity, as it is a lower task. The bit is hardened and coated against wear far more than the average drill bit, as the shank is non-consumable. Almost all indexable drill bits have multiple coolant channels for prolonged tool life under heavy usage. They are also readily available in odd configurations, such as straight flute fast spiral, multi-flute, and a variety of cutting face geometries. Typically indexable drill bits are used in holes that are no deeper than about five times the bit diameter. They are capable of quite high axial loads and cut very fast. Left hand bit. And one 8 inch left hand drill bit left hand bits are almost always twist bits and are predominantly used in the repetition engineering industry on screw machines or drilling heads. Left-handed drill bits allow a machining operation to continue where either the spindle cannot be reversed or the design of the machine makes it more efficient to run left-handed. With the increased use of the more versatile CNC machines, their use is less common than when specialized machines were required for machining tasks. Screw extractors are essentially left-hand bits of specialized shape, used to remove common right-hand screws whose heads are broken or too damaged to allow a screwdriver tip to engage, making use of a screwdriver impossible. The extractor is pressed against the damaged head and rotated counterclockwise and will tend to jam in the damaged head and then turn the screw counterclockwise, unscrewing it. For screws that break off deeper in the hole, an extractor set will often include left-handed drill bits of the appropriate diameter so that grab holes can be drilled into the screws in a left-handed direction, preventing further tightening of the broken piece. Metal Spade Bit A spade drill bit for metal is a two-part bit with a tool holder and an insertable tip, called an insert. The inserts come in various sizes that range from 716 to 2.5 inches. The tool holder usually has a coolant passage running through it. They are capable of cutting to a depth of about 10 times the bit diameter. This type of drill bit can also be used to make stepped holes. Straight fluted bit. Straight fluted drill bits do not have a helical twist like twist drill bits do. They are used when drilling copper or brass because they have less of a tendency to dig in or grab the material. Trepan. A trepan, sometimes called a BTA drill bit after the boring and trepanning association is a drill bit that cuts an annulus and leaves a center core. Trepans usually have multiple carbide inserts and rely on water to cool the cutting tips and to flush chips out of the hole. Trepans are often used to cut large diameters and deep holes. 
Typical bit diameters are 6 14 in and hole depth from 12 in up to 71 feet. Wood drill bits. Brad point bit. The Brad point drill bit also known as lip and spur drill bit, and dowel drill bit is a variation of the twist drill bit which is optimized for drilling in wood. Conventional twist drill bits tend to wander when presented to a flat work piece. For metal work, this is countered by drilling a pilot hole with a spotting drill bit. In wood, the brad point drill bit is another solution, the center of the drill bit is given not the straight chisel of the twist drill bit, but a spur with a sharp point, and four sharp corners to cut the wood. While drilling, the sharp point of the spur pushes into the soft wood to keep the drill bit in line. Metals are typically isotropic, so even an ordinary twist drill bit will shear the edges of the hole cleanly. Wood drilled across the grain, however, produces long strands of wood fiber. These long strands tend to pull out of the hole, rather than being cleanly cut at the hole edge. The brad point drill bit has the outside corner of the cutting edges leading, so that it cuts the periphery of the hole before the inner parts of the cutting edges plane off the base of the hole. By cutting the periphery first, the lip maximizes the chance that the fibers can be cut cleanly, rather than having to be pulled messily from the timber. Brad point drill bits are also effective in soft plastic. When using conventional twist drill bits in a handheld drill, where the drilling direction is not maintained perfectly throughout the operation, there is a tendency for hole edges to be smeared due to side friction and heat. In metal, the brad point drill bit is confined to drilling only the thinnest and softest sheet metals, ideally with a drill press. The bits have an extremely fast cutting tool geometry, no point angle, combined with a large considering the flat cutting edge lip angle causes the edges to take a very aggressive cut with relatively little point pressure. This means these bits tend to bind in metal given a workpiece of sufficient thinness, they have a tendency to punch through and leave the bits cross-sectional geometry behind. Brad point drill bits are ordinarily available in diameters from 316 mm. Wood spade bit. Spade bits are used for rough boring in wood. They tend to cause splintering when they emerge from the workpiece. Woodworkers avoid splintering by finishing the hole from the opposite side of the work. Spade bits are flat, with a centering point and two cutters. The cutters are often equipped with spurs in an attempt to ensure a cleaner hole. With their small shank diameters relative to their boring diameters, spade bit shanks often have flats forged or ground into them to prevent slipping in drill chucks. Some bits are equipped with long shanks and have a small hole drilled through the flat part allowing them to be used much like a bell hanger bit. Intended for high-speed use, they are used with electric hand drills. Spade bits are also sometimes referred to as paddle bits. Spade drill bits are ordinarily available in diameters from 6 to 36 mm, or 1-4 to 1-1-2 inches. Forstner bit. Forstner bits, named after their inventor Benjamin Forstner, bore precise, flat-bottomed holes in wood in any orientation with respect to the wood grain. They can cut on the edge of a block of wood, and can cut overlapping holes for such applications they are normally used in drill presses or lathes rather than in handheld electric drills. Because of the flat bottom of the hole, they are useful for drilling through veneer already glued to add an inlay. The bit includes a center brad point which guides it throughout the cut and incidentally spoils the otherwise flat bottom of the hole. The cylindrical cutter around the perimeter shears the wood fibers at the edge of the bore, and also helps guide the bit into the material more precisely. Forstner bits have radial cutting edges to plane off the material at the bottom of the hole. The bits shown in the images have two radial edges other designs may have more. Forstner bits have no mechanism to clear chips from the hole, and therefore must be pulled out periodically. Sawtooth bits are also available which include many more cutting edges to the cylinder. These cut faster, but produce a more ragged hole. They have advantages over Forstner bits when boring into end grain. Bits are commonly available in sizes from 850 mm diameter. Sawtooth bits are available up to 100 mm diameter. Originally the Forstner bit was very successful with gunsmiths because of its ability to drill an exceedingly smooth-sided hole. Ability. Center bit. The center bit is optimized for drilling in wood with a hand brace. Many different designs have been produced. The center of the bit is a tapered screw thread. This screws into the wood as the bit is turned, 
and pulls the bit into the wood. There is no need for any force to push the bit into the workpiece, only the torque to turn the bit. This is ideal for a bit for a hand tool. The radial cutting edges remove a slice of wood of thickness equal to the pitch of the central screw for each rotation of the bit. To pull the bit from the hole, either the female thread in the wood workpiece must be stripped, or the rotation of the bit must be reversed. The edge of the bit has a sharpened spur to cut the fibers of the wood, as in the brad point drill bit. A radial cutting edge planes the wood from the base of the hole. In this version, there is minimal or no spiral to remove chips from the hole. The bit must be periodically withdrawn to clear the chips. Some versions have two spurs. Some have two radial cutting edges. Center bits do not cut well in the end grain of wood. The central screw tends to pull out, or to split the wood along the grain, and the radial edges have trouble cutting through the long wood fibers. Center bits are made of relatively soft steel, and can be sharpened with a file. Auger bit. The cutting principles of the auger bit are the same as those of the center bit. The auger adds a long deep spiral flute for effective chip removal. Two styles of auger bit are commonly used in hand braces. The Jennings or Jennings pattern bit has a self-feeding screw tip, two spurs and two radial cutting edges. This bit has a double flute starting from the cutting edges, and extending several inches up the shank of the bit, for waste removal. This pattern of bit was developed by Russell Jennings in the mid-19th century. The Irwin or solid center auger bit is similar, the only difference being that one of the cutting edges has only a vestigial flute supporting it, which extends only about 1-2 inch up the shank before ending. The other flute continues full length up the shank for waste removal. The Irwin bit may afford greater space for waste removal greater strength because the design allows for a center shank of increased size within the flutes, as compared to the Jenning bits, or smaller manufacturing costs. This style of bit was invented in 1884, and the rights sold to Charles Irwin who patented and marketed this pattern the following year. Both styles of auger bits were manufactured by several companies throughout the early and mid-20th century, and are still available new from select sources today. The diameter of auger bits for hand braces is commonly expressed by a single number, indicating the size in sixteenths of an inch. For example, 4 is 4 or 1 4 in, 6 is 6 or 3 8 in, 9 is 9 16 in, and 16 is 1 inch. Sets commonly consist of 4 16 or 4 10 bits. The bit shown in the picture is a modern design for use in portable power tools, made in the UK in about 1995. It has a single spur, a single radial cutting edge and a single flute. Similar auger bits are made with diameters from 3 16 inch to 1 masonry drill bit. The masonry bit shown here is a variation of the twist drill bit. The bulk of the tool is a relatively soft steel, and is machined with a mill rather than ground. An insert of tungsten carbide is brazed into the steel to provide the cutting edges. Masonry bits typically are used with a hammer drill which hammers the bit into the material being drilled as it rotates the hammering breaks up the masonry at the drill bit tip, and the rotating flutes carry away the dust. Rotating the bit also brings the cutting edges onto a fresh portion of the whole bottom with every hammer blow. Hammer drill bits often use special shank shapes such as the SDS type, which allows the bit to slide within the chuck when hammering, without the whole heavy chuck executing the hammering motion. Masonry bits of the style shown are commonly available in diameters from 3 mm to 40 mm. For larger diameters, core bits are used. Masonry bits up to 39 inch long can be used with hand portable power tools, and are very effective for installing wiring and plumbing in existing buildings. Obviously this short list is just an example of drill bits that are in use today. Many other specialty bits are also used for specific jobs but we will need another video to cover these. To power these bits you will need tools that will range from a few dollars to several hundred dollars, some will cost in the thousands. Most common drills for the average homeowner will be small, lightweight and very simple to use. Please let us know in the comment section below what other tools and or accessories you would like to be reviewed. Like always. All constructive criticism will be appreciated and smash the thumbs up button to be notified of all upcoming videos.